Dynamic fill adds a new way of defining regions on a drawing and applying markups that makes performing takeoffs much faster and more effective by allowing you to make a large or complex selection faster so your takeoff process becomes much more efficient. Selections are made using a fill tool which pours a selection inside any enclosed shape on a drawing. A second boundary tool makes it possible to connect line work on the drawing, creating a barrier for the fill selection for shapes that are not closed. Once a selection has been made, you can select a number of elements and apply them and those elements will be created. To add a dynamic fill to a region, go to Measure, Dynamic Fill. This activates a folding toolbar with all the tools and functions you'll need to quickly extract an area, listed out here on the top left. Go to the region you'll need to mark up. Before using the fill, you'll want to make sure the shape you want to fill is enclosed. You'll see here it is. Clicking on this cogwheel here will pull up the dynamic fill settings. You'll see the boundary size, fill size, fill speed, and edge sensitivity. This will help give you control on the changes you're making depending on the markups that you're trying to make. To use the fill tool, you would just click and drag until the whole space is filled. So there you see how much that makes performing takeoffs much faster and more effective. Like I mentioned, it definitely allows you to make changes to larger complex selections much faster, making your, making your process become much more efficient. So now let's talk about dynamic fill preferences. We brought it up a little while ago where we clicked on the cogwheel and it showed the the preferences that you can choose for your dynamic fill settings. But I want to kind of get a little more in depth about what each of them mean. The dynamic fill preferences contain the default settings for the controlling display options associated with, dy with dynamic fill. Another way to get to the preferences is by going to settings, preferences, dynamic fill. So the first setting you'll see is boundary size. Boundary size will, will allow you to select the size of the cruiser used when adding a temporary boundary, as well as the color. And on both of these settings, you're able to select which color you'd like to use. Fill size. Select the size of the cruiser used when filling a shape. And then here you see fill speed. Fill speed allows you to select the speed at which the highlight spreads when filling a shape. Edge sensitivity. This allows you to select the sensitivity used when detecting boundaries when filling a shape. Depending on the line weights and the content layer of the PDF, boundaries might be missed or false positive picked up, and adjusting this setting can correct these issues. Dynamic Fill Input DPI. Select the DPI setting at which drawings are examined when extracting the shape. Higher DPI settings will increase the extraction tool sensitivity to lines in the drawing, for example, curved lines, while lower DPI settings will reduce the sensitivity to noise while other det others detecting clearly defined angular lines. Note that higher DPI settings will increase the resource demands of the tool. And then you have hide annotations during dynamic fill. 
When enabled, pre-existing markups are hidden on the PDF during the dynamic cell. So there you have it. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 480-559-8670 or send an email to bluebeam at orangeblade.com. Thank you.